Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed Monday that Israel would continue to fight until achieving its war goals, as the country marked the first anniversary of the Hamas attack that kicked off the war. He made the comments during a cabinet meeting after releasing a statement earlier at a tribute also closed to the public. It was unclear if Netanyahu, who faces stiff domestic criticism for failing to bring home the hostages remaining in Gaza and for the security failures that led to the attack October 7, would speak publicly. Netanyahu said Israel would continue fighting until Hamas was overthrown in Gaza, the living and dead hostages were returned home, and residents of the countries north and south could return home. Since that black day, we are under attack on seven fronts, said Netanyahu, referring to October 7. Our counterattack on our enemies in Iran's axis of evil is a necessary condition for securing our future and ensuring our security, he added. Israel has swapped blows with Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthi rebels in Yemen, and other groups it says are Iranian proxies since the October 7 attack, when militants killed 1,200 in southern Israel and dragged 250 hostages across the border to Gaza. Israel's offensive in Gaza killed over 41,600 Palestinians and laid waste to much of the territory. Israel has also launched a punishing wave of airstrikes and a ground incursion in Lebanon to root out Hezbollah's presence across the border and return displaced Israelis to their homes in the north. אנחנו מתכנסים היום לישיבת אבל מיוחדת. היום לפני שנה, בשעה 6.29 בבוקר, מחבלי החמאס פתחו במתקפת פתע רצחנית נגד מדינת ישראל, נגד אזרחי ישראל. זמן קצר מכן, לאחר אה, הטבח הזה, אמרתי בקריאה בתל אביב, אנחנו במלחמה, לא במבצע, לא בסבבים, במלחמה. אנחנו נשיב מלחמה שערה בעוצמה שהאויב לא הכיר ונגבה ממנו מחיר שהוא לא ידע כמותו. אנחנו במלחמה ואנחנו ננצח. שמע אדוני קולי אקרא, תכונני ועננני. לך אמר ליבי, תקשו בניי, את פניך אדוני אבקש. מאז אותו יום שחור אנחנו נלחמים. זוהי מלחמת הקיום שלנו. מלחמת התקומה. כך אני מבקש לקרוא למלחמה באופן רשמי. מאז אותו יום שחור אנחנו בהתקפה בשבע חזיתות. התקפת הנגד שלנו על אויבינו בציר הרשע של איראן היא תנאי הכרחי להבטחת עתידנו, להבטחת ביטחוננו. אנחנו נסיים את המלחמה כשנשלים את כל היעדים שקבענו. מיטוט שלטון הרשע של החמאס, החזרת כל חטופינו הביתה, החללים והחיים כאחד, סיכול של כל איום עתידי מעזה על ישראל והשבת תושבינו בדרום ובצפון בבטחה לבתיהם. הטבח ב-7 באוקטובר היה ההתקפה הנוראה ביותר על העם היהודי מאז השואה. אבל שלא כמו בשואה, קמנו על אויבינו והשבנו מלחמה שערה. אין עם כל אבי יקום וכארי יתנשא. אנחנו משנים את המציאות הביטחונית באזורנו למען ילדינו, למען עתידנו, כדי להבטיח שמה שקרה ב-7 באוקטובר לא יקרה שוב, לעולם לא עוד. Aerial scouts of the Ukrainian security service have intercepted and targeted a large number of armored combat vehicles and personnel of the occupying Russian army in the eastern direction of the front. Over the past week, the kamikaze drone strikes have destroyed two Buk anti-aircraft missile complexes, worth $40 million each, Jayatsyn self-propelled artillery and 18 more artillery and rocket launcher systems, 10 tanks, 33 armored personnel carriers belonging to the occupying army. For air defense systems and one radio electronic countermeasure system, 219 vehicles, including motorcycles, 22 drones, 22 communication antennas, 18 fortifications and firing points, two ammunition depots and hundreds of soldiers were destroyed.
a certain number of residents of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation, part of which is controlled by the Ukrainian armed forces, want to move to Ukraine. This was reported on air by Alexei Dmitrashkovsky, a representative of the Ukrainian military commandment's office in the Kursk region on Apostrophe TV. He says that locals treat Ukrainian servicemen very well. Dmitrashkovsky says that in some cases, people claim that the Ukrainian armed forces treat them better than the Russian authorities and they are offended by the Kursk region leadership, which abandoned them and does not take any part in their lives. A fairly large number of people are already saying out loud that they want to leave for Ukraine, that they don't trust their government. According to Dmitrashkovsky, representatives of the Ukrainian Defense Forces are currently helping residents of the Kursk region with food, firewood, medicine and warm clothes. They are also showing videos with news informing about what is happening in Ukraine, the Russian Federation and in the world in general. We show the news. We try to inform the population about what is happening in Russia, in the world, in Ukraine. They didn't know anything at all, the soldier said. According to him, the only thing that the residents of Kursk region heard about Ukrainians was that Russian propagandists said, Ukrainians are fascists who kill their children, destroy their cities and abuse their residents. Even one woman said that when Ukrainian soldiers entered the village, they hid in the bushes so as not to be seen by the soldiers because they were scared that they were animals. Today, they tell these stories with a smile on their faces and trust the Ukrainian soldiers at least they are waiting for our arrival, says Dmitrashkovsky. He added that in the part of Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces are located, there are mainly elderly people who suffer from various diseases and there are also small children. In addition, Dmitrashkovsky said that the Russian army is launching attacks on the Kursk region as a result of which 24 Russian citizens have already died and more than 30 have been injured. The Russians understand very well who is shooting at them, the military man said. According to him, the Russian military is also striking infrastructure facilities, water towers, electrical substations, etc.